All right, we are on chapter 13. At the end of chapter 12, um, we had Gerda, she said, I looked at the drawing one more time before setting off for home. Well, not directly home. Somewhere in East Berlin, this building was waiting for me. I needed to find it and that's where I would dig. So the picture that Anna gave to her of that building she was looking to find. All right, chapter 13. Three days of searching turned up nothing. So many places came close, but something was always different from the picture. It had the wrong type of roof or different windows or no chimney at all. It seemed like everything built since the war looked alike and the building in the drawing appeared older than that. About a half mile east of my school was a street of older homes, but I didn't see the one from the drawing among them. I was beginning to wonder if this building really existed at least in East Berlin. The fourth day was another Saturday, a week since I had last seen Papa. Mama sent me to school with a loaf of bread to give to Anna's family. It wasn't much, but it was all we had to spare, and Mama would, wouldn't have dared offer more anyway. Anna's family was still being shamed for what Peter had done. Mama didn't want it to look like our families were that close. But Anna wasn't in school that day, and the teacher said she had complained the day before of not feeling well. So I decided to deliver the bread on my way home that afternoon. At least it gave me the opportunity to walk a different neighborhood of Berlin, and a part of me hoped that as her sorrows healed, so would our friendship. Anna met me at the door, and although she looked as healthy as anyone else, I didn't question her. If I could get away with faking sickness to skip school, I'd do it every day and not feel a hint of guilt. Before Anna slammed the door, I shoved the loaf of bread at her. This is from my mother, I said lamely. She thought your family might want it. She didn't seem too enthusiastic about accepting it, and though I wanted to believe the Stasi couldn't find anything wrong with my mother's simple gift, I wasn't that naive, not anymore. But whether she wanted it or not, the bread was in Anna's hands now and the only way she could refuse it would be to drop it on the door or hurl it back at me. If she did, I wouldn't have much cared. All Mama had asked was that I gave her the bread, not force her to keep it. Finally, Anna mumbled, thank you. She started to close the door, but I put a foot on the jam to block it. I'm sorry Peter's gone, but you shouldn't be ashamed of what he tried to do. Though I hadn't planned to say that, the words poured out of me. The thoughts had swirled in my head for so long, it was a relief to speak them, and at least I was careful to keep my voice low. He wanted a better life, a free life. You can't blame him for that, or at least I don't. We have a good life here, Anna said. Why wasn't it enough for him? I explained it to her the way Fritz explained it to me long ago. You've seen the sun, Anna. Now that you have... Could you ever be content with just the stars for light? Would that be enough for you? Anna bit her lip and her eyes darted both ways along the hallway. If anyone had been there, she'd already have shut her door on me. When she was sure that we were alone, she whispered, The night he tried escaping, Peter left a letter for us on his bed. The Stasi have it now but his roommate at the university found it first and told us what it said. The final line was, if I don't stand for freedom, then I must sit in chains. Is that what you believe too, Gerda? Of course I did. We were in chains, even if she couldn't see them. I spent six days a week in a school that taught me freedom was a lie and every minute in public pretending I believed it. She knew the consequences for speaking out just as I did. Why else was Herr Krauss arrested? And there was the wall. If life was so terrible beyond it, then why force us to stay here? But I couldn't say any of this to her. Not anymore. Anna seemed to already have the answer for her question. Her gaze hardened. I told my parents the real people in chains are those who break our laws. They must know they're going to be caught sooner or later. Suddenly, our simple conversation began to sound like an accusation. I wasn't sure why. As far as I knew, I wasn't breaking any laws, none of the, none of the big ones anyway. A door opened down the hallway, and I turned to see who was coming. 
In that instant, Anna slammed her door shut and I became a disease again. I marched from her apartment with a few unkind phrases in mind that I wish I had said while I had the chance. She was practically quoting the state's propaganda, no better than a puppet on their string. Besides, I had only brought bread, not smuggled goods or revolutionary pamphlets. No secret messages were baked inside and we were asked for nothing in return. It was only bread. And yet, she had treated me like I'd brought the plague. No, she believed something worse. That wherever I went, the Stasi would eventually follow. That was a ridiculous idea. Wasn't it? I decided to take a shortcut home, which sent me down a narrow alley that I usually avoided because of the leftover rubble from the bombings at the end of the last war. But this time... All I wanted was to get home and slam my bedroom door behind me and try to forget I had ever been friends with Anna. Except where I shouldn't should have turned back onto the main road, I looked farther down the down the alley and saw it led to the back of some other older buildings. I had never been on this abandoned street before, yet it still felt familiar. Walking faster to keep pace with my racing heartbeat, I took in the details of one particular building. It was old and square and made of brick and looked like it would crumble if hit by a strong enough wind. Two long windows ran up the back and a chimney going up the side was made of darker colored brick. The three square windows at ground level were boarded up and once I left the alley, it was easy to see why. The building now served as a part of the Berlin Wall. Tall cinder block rows butted up directly against the old building and the barbed wire emerged from the wall all the way up and over the top of the building. I could only assume the front of the building was inside the death strip and that it was sealed up too. Two more old buildings connected in a row to the building in front of me. Then the wall continued on from there. The ground where I now stood looked like a small patch of forgotten farmland. It was infested with weeds, some that were almost as tall as me. Halfway to the road, a deep irrigation ditch supplied a small pond. Far to the left and behind the wall was a watchtower, which I knew from all my previous observations was always staffed with Grenzers, who constantly looked out for anyone getting too near the wall. But they'd need binoculars to see me well, and they didn't appear to be a border zone here. Or at least nothing was marked to keep us away from the wall, and the fire tracks, sorry, and the tire tracks from the Grenzer patrols didn't look too recent. My eyes flicked back to the building in front of me as my heart pounded with possibilities. This was the place my father had wanted me to find, and something was buried inside it. I didn't know what, but the first chance I got to return with Mama's shovel, I intended to find out. <laughs>